Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay. More on that later. What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Modern Hobbyist. Today I'm going to be upgrading my motorized camera slider that I made a few years ago so it not only works a lot better, but it's also much sturdier and it looks a lot better too. Let's get started. Welcome back everybody, I'm Charlie with Modern Hobbyist. You may remember in a previous video, I built a motorized camera slider using some extruded aluminum and a stepper motor to move the camera along the track. That project turned out pretty cool, but there were several issues with it that caused me to barely use it over the past year. First of all, I designed Mark 1 to be used with my iPhone, which is what I was recording with at the time, and I've since upgraded to a big boy camera, so I'll need to redesign the gantry and mounting system to support it. Another problem that I had with Mark 1 wasn't so much with the slider itself, but more the tripod I was mounting it on. I was just using a cheap tripod off of Amazon and it wasn't sturdy enough to support the weight of the camera slider plus my iPhone, let alone a digital camera. When the gantry got to the end of the slider, it would tip the end down several inches unless I supported it with something else. The last and probably biggest problem I had with Mark 1 was that I built it using A4988 stepper motor drivers, which are usually great for things like 3D printers or CNC machines, but in this particular use case, they caused way too much vibration that was clearly visible in any videos I recorded on it. I tried to get around this by adding some shock absorption pads to the phone mount, but it didn't quite work as well as I had hoped, and since I'm using an actual camera now, that solution won't work anymore anyways. So with those problems in mind, I got to work redesigning and building my do-it-yourself camera slider Mark II, and this time, I'm gonna be doing it with a little help from today's video sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is a company that specializes in prototyping and small volume production, making it the perfect one-stop shop for all your do-it-yourself project needs. Using their online tool, you can upload a Gerber file, select your settings, and get 10 custom PCBs for only $5. They also provide 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding services. So make sure to check them out in the link in the description below so you can take your next do-it-yourself project to the next level. Huge thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and for providing the PCBs for this camera slider. Now let's get back to building it.
And here it is, folks. Do-it-yourself camera slider Mark II. Just like Mark I, it can be controlled over Bluetooth using the Blink app, and it has dual end stops so it knows when it has reached the end of its track, at which point it can turn around and go in the other direction. But unlike Mark I, this time I designed it with TMC 2209 stepper motor drivers, which provide much smoother movement than the old ones, plus I added several mounting points on the bottom of the track so I can use multiple tripods to mount it at whatever angle I want. I redesigned the gantry plate so it could support DSLR or mirrorless cameras, and I was able to shrink down the new PCB a whole bunch so the overall electronics enclosure could be much more discreet. I also redesigned both the motor mount and the idler pulleys to be much more streamlined, easy to assemble, and just sturdier overall. With all those updates, this version is actually usable with my new camera, and I think it turned out absolutely awesome. But I think the biggest upgrade over Mark 1 was that this time I printed it in blue, so yeah. Anyways, that's it for this project. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I sure did, and I'm super excited to use it to hopefully take my videos to the next level. If you liked this project, make sure to smash the like button, and if you have any thoughts on how I can improve this design, let me know in the comments below. I'll also have the 3D models, code, and electrical schematics linked in the description in case you're interested in making one of your own. Lastly, if you like do-it-yourself 3D printing and electronics projects, then you're in the right place because that's like what I do here. So make sure to subscribe and click that bell icon so you don't miss any of my future videos. Otherwise, that's all for this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.